hello guys hope you're doing great and welcome back to Trantrix. and in this video we are going to talk about the chapter 3 of learning PowerShell with fun and what it's gonna be it's understanding the syntax so let's get started when you initially look at the syntax you'll be like that wow and when you try to understand it you will be always like what is that but believe me guys, I know how that feels. I've been there, but it's all easy to understand only. And once you kind of understand what it is, then you'll be like, yeah, now I get it. So let's get started into the main picture. So there are different types of parameters available. Okay, like how many? There are five different types of parameters available. Yes, five. I know there are too many of them, but hang in there. We will get through each one of them and you will understand them clearly with examples. So the first one is positional parameter and mandatory parameters, optional parameters, switch parameters, and finally common parameters. So I will go by uh, one by one. So first one is positional parameters. So PowerShell designers already knew that some of the parameters would be often used in certain commandlets. So you don't need to repeatedly type those parameter names. So those are all called positional parameters. So how can I identify it in the syntax? So when you look at the below example, I'm just going with help. I'm using the help obviously uh, for get hyphen event log uh, commandlet. So if you look at here, the log name, the only the log name parameter alone covered with the square brackets. So this means it's positional one. Run PowerShell get hyphen event log and I type log name and you know uh, as soon as you type a few letters and when you hit tab it will auto complete so when it comes to the event logs you know there are many types of logs available but basically you know applications security system so those, those are all the you know three types that we mostly look into so I'll just go with application enter and I get it I get the output and since I mentioned that the log name parameter is the positional one and we don't need to type it so I'll just go ahead and I'll just delete it so I just delete at the log name parameter and I hit enter and now I get the output so this is what names positional parameter So again, the parameter alone will be covered with the square brackets. So this means it's positional. Hope you understand it. So I'll jump to the next one. Second one is the mandatory parameters. So there are certain parameters without mentioning them, you cannot run the command. So those parameters are called as mandatory parameters. And again, how can I identify it in the syntax? So when you look at the below example, we are going with the same help get event log and only the parameter is surrounded by the square brackets. I told you guys, this means uh, it is a positional parameter, but at the same time, both the parameter as well as the value is not surrounded by the square brackets. So this means it's mandatory. So to make it clear, when we run the get hyphen event log, you don't need to include the log name parameter as it's positional. However, you must enter the value of the log name parameter, which is application or system or security or anything else. So if I go back here, so I gave this example. I removed the log name parameter because it was positional and 
since this log name parameter is also mandatory we must include the value and if i do not mention that also and if i hit enter as soon as i hit enter it will ask for the log name because this parameter is mandatory and just like i mentioned without providing them you cannot run the command so i'll give system this time so i got it so let's go back to our slide hope you understand it and let's go back to the next one so the next parameter is going to be optional parameter so there are certain parameters that are optional so uh, even you can run a command even without mentioning them so how can i identify it in the syntax so let's look at the below example we are going with the same get hyphen event log of help this time also however we are taking the instance id parameter and here when you look at this this is the parameter name and this is the value and both are covered with the square brackets so if both the parameter and value is covered with square brackets then it means it's optional so you don't need to mention this at all and uh, do you notice any other parameter is combined in the same instance id parameter yes if you guessed it correctly even though it is uh, optional parameter and at the same time the parameter name alone also covered with a square bracket so which makes it as a positional parameter as well so just like the log name so in the log name it was both positional as well as mandatory and if you come to the instance id it is both positional as well as optional because both are covered with the square brackets so i hope you understand it now so let's move to the next yeah before moving into the next type of parameter there is something i have to tell you which is parameter attribute table so whenever you are using a get help commandlet for any other commandlet along with its parameter like full or parameter or online get help displays a parameter attribute table with detailed information about each one of the parameter as shown below so i'll just uh, show you in the powershell as well help get event log i'll go full so let's go to the log name yeah so these are all the uh, i mean this is called parameter attribute table and each one of the parameters will have the description of what it is and there are some more additional things so if you look at here we are going to uh, look into only these two uh, record and position the other three things uh, will be explained when we are talking about the pipeline so record is true so it means it's mandatory and position if it is zero or any other integer or any other number it means it's positional and if you look at the username parameter the record is false so it means it's an optional parameter and position it's named so it is like if needed it can be used by mentioning or typing the parameter name along with the value so this is another way of finding out if the parameter is uh, mandatory or optional or positional so hope you understand this slide so i'll switch to the next type of parameter which is switch parameter so there are certain parameters which do not take any inputs so that is called switch parameters so if you look at the below example you see the triggers 
So records is just only the parameter. There is no value along with it, just like this path has. So path has the value of string, but records it doesn't. I will show you this example in real time. So I'll go with get hyphen child item. So get hyphen child item. It is the alternative of dir that we use in the command line. So I'll go with path and see temp so now if you look at here i got the these are all the folder names and these are all the files and with this command let alone i'm just getting the folder and the files which are available in the temp directory and in case i want to see all the files inside these three folders also then I will go with the recurse parameter which is a switch parameter that means it does not take any inputs so I'll just go ahead and hit enter and now if you look at it so I got the folder names and file names in the temp directory and at the same time in the folder 1 what are the files I have in the folder 2 what are the files I have and folder 3 so it will show you all the files that are available in uh, each one of the folders. So hope you understand it. So next one is common parameters. So you will notice common parameters in all the command let. I'll just show you. Help get hyphen and log. And you see common parameters. And here also common parameters. And if I go with any other command let say service and here also you will see the common parameters and if I go with process you'll see the common parameters here as well so this common parameter is available for all the command lets. so that's why it's called as common parameters haha <laughs> Okay, so there are 11 common parameters available as of today and it could become more maybe in the future and I'm not going to explain each one of them but you will get to know them in the future when we are going to use them. But in case uh, you are curious about them, you can always go with help about common parameters. So this will show you the complete explanation of what each one of them does. So moving to the next. So that is so so far we were talking about the parameters. Now we'll talk about the parameter values. So parameter values are the ones that we give as an input for the parameter itself. So in the below example, the name is the parameter name and the string is the value that we will be giving for this name parameter as an input. So if you see, uh, the value must be the string. And if you notice, uh, just beside the string, you see uh, two square brackets in it. So it means it can take multiple inputs. And in the next example, if you uh, look at this instance ID, it also has uh, two brackets in it so that means it also takes multiple inputs but it has the different value in 64 so it means it's an integer I mean this instance ID parameter accepts the numbers so based on the type you will see what kind of value it is going to take so just like the computer name is going to take the string and instance ID is going to take the numbers and when it has double uh, square brackets in it, it means it will take multiple inputs. And if you look at the log name here, beside the string, there is no square brackets in it. So log name will accept only one input. So I'll show you uh, in the example. So let's get even log application I'll just go with this first so if you see this is the instance ID so I'll just take number 3 and 1 
so I mentioned instance ID 3 comma 1 I hit enter and you will get only the application logs which has the instance ID of 3 and 1 alone so uh, just like I mentioned instance ID takes multiple uh, inputs we can mention like that and uh, get hyphen event log the log name parameter that is accepting only one input so we can mention only application alone so let's look at get process powerpoint comma powershell and if you see since it accepts multiple values we can see the result of them as well okay hope you understand uh, the parameter values and there is something called a parameter set as well so let's look at the below example if you see the help get event log it brings up uh, two syntax like here there is one set and there is another one so this is called uh, parameter set so based on the result what you're looking for you can use either of them but you have to note that you cannot mix up the parameter sets together it will not work you know for example if you take get event log and you are typing the list and if you are taking the instance id from above and then you mention here along with the list you will get an error so i'll just show you quickly get even log and list so if you see this is uh, brings the complete different uh, type of information from the event logs so see the list brings all the different types of logs available and how many entries are there what is the overflow action what are the retention time what is the maximum uh, data it can save up to and if i go with instance id just like uh, i did in the previous example if i go with three i will get an error parameter set cannot be resolved using the specified named parameters so it will not work and just like that uh, i'll go with application and instance id 3 and if you go with the list i'll get the same error because now i'm mixing second parameter set with the first one so i'll get the error so hope you got the point So now we are in the summary and you might as well take a snapshot uh, so you can keep it as a handy for easy understanding and uh, please note that sometimes a single parameter can be mixed with different types of parameters as we've seen in our previous example you know wherein uh, they get event log the log name parameter was both positional and mandatory and also the instant id was both positional and optional i hope you like the video that's all for today and thank you so much for learning and please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for the next set of series and if you have any feedbacks that i have to change uh, the way i teach uh, please let me know in the comment section below have a great day guys bye, -bye.